Yeah, we're, we're just seeing amongst our customers a return to office. So it's only just started to happen August, September. For many customers, they've selected now to delay until January the 1st because they're, they're not set up and they're not ready. Um, um, and the main reason for that is they're still going through the thinking process of, of how it's going to work for the people, what should the space look like, and what technology should be installed as such. So where before the office was your working life, nine to five every day, it, it certainly has changed and the purpose for the office has completely changed and the motivation to bring people back in um, has changed because if you're going to come in just to simply do a, another Teams call, you, you could do it from home. Um, so it has to be about accessibility of, of new collaboration um, um, tools, um, whether it's data, whether it's actually working together, brainstorming. Um, so the office design has certainly changed um, um, in the modern day compared to where it was 18 months ago. Well, I think we were going to the office by default before COVID. We weren't really thinking about it. We were just doing it. Um, but most organizations did have some kind of agile working program before COVID. So people were already working in a mobile way, you know, um, and we know um, from, you know, the research into building occupancy that we were only using our buildings 60% of the time before COVID. So actually there was a lot of mobility there anyway. Now organizations that were cloud-based and had agile working programs, they just continued as COVID hit. It wasn't disruptive. Um, so the first, everybody was very surprised in the first few months, everybody was saying, oh, this is working really well. Productivity is not dropping. Um, but as it went on, we've started to see the erosions of things like well-being, of um, connection to culture, connection to brand, learning and development most recently. So as the 18 months have gone on, some clear patterns have emerged about what is good and easy to do remotely and what we need to come back to the office for. Yeah, cu culture will certainly change and many organizations are trying to right now um, uncover and discover what should that culture look like. And it's interesting where before we go to a meeting and um, they talk about infrastructure and they talk about the technology and typically it'll be with an arch um, infrastructure architect or an IT manager around the table talking about what it should look like and what they should be purchasing. It was a device that was there for a purpose. The purpose was communication or, or video um, and so on. But now it's changed. So we go into that meeting and you do have HR as a stakeholder in the room, yeah. really, really critical. You do have the IT manager and together, um, Nicholas said it earlier in terms of you're looking at kind of the space, you are looking at the technology and you're looking at the people and then you're looking at, well, how do we, how do we keep the people motivated how do we give them purpose to come back to the office and part of that is is interpersonal it's about exchanging thoughts and ideas it's about the the um getting together and socializing that's what people have missed and we've looked at the survey and the survey findings showed clearly that's that's the number one topic um what they haven't missed is that commuting um as such and, and that's something that that they just don't want so they are going to get on the transportation uh, drive a car um, and get to the office, it has to be a purpose for doing that. A part of that is going to be to come to an environment which is not at a desk, not desk space. It's, it's potentially going to be a little bit more task orientated. So there is a purpose and specific reason to be there. But for them, it's going to be about that social element. It's about that understanding of that culture. It's about the learning, the development. Um, and, and for many instances, and especially those people who, that age range of 18 to 24, who joined the company within the last, uh, within the last 18 months, mm -hmm. They themselves have a, a little bit of anxiety about getting back to the office for the first time because they actually haven't met anyone. Um, and for themselves, I think the biggest concern, and it's shown in the surveys, is, is whether the development is actually really happening um, and how it can happen as they're remote from home as such. And then also building that relationship with your manager, your peers, that networking, and starting to grow and understand the company um, in, in a different phase. So I think the, 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 the secret is going to be in the balance, you know, I think it's very easy, easy to polarise the debate and actually there's very a small number of people that want to be either fully remote or fully in the office, the vast majority are somewhere in between and that balance is different depending on your age, your role, your nationality. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges going forward and certainly, you know, our research shows that 
learning and development, connection to culture, are the two reasons why people will want to come into the office. And also socialising, of course, to see people in person. We have just released <clears throat> a piece of thought leadership around workplace reintegration, because I agree, as you say, actually a lot of people find the thought quite stressful of coming back. It's not just, especially in, in large cities like London, where you're very dependent on public transport people. That's the immediate barrier, is the public transport. And the trains this morning were dreadful. They were absolutely packed. So, you know, that's the first thing. But yes, I think people are nervous about coming physically together again when they haven't done that for so long. And things like having to wear trousers and shoes and that sort of thing, which I think is is another challenge for people. And, and it shouldn't be underestimated. And we have to manage that transition with care. You know, some people will run screaming back to the office. They won't be able to wait to get back. But for others, it's a real transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just, just to add something to that, which is, again, through the survey, showed that a high percentage of people just don't care what they wear anymore. And, yeah. and they feel comfortable with what they wear. And actually, they don't want to go back to wearing a suit or, or having to look after themselves in, in, in another way. Even hygiene came up as, as unfortunately, something that people care less about um, all of a sudden. Um, but I t totally agree. C coming to the office, that, that part that people, I guess, in terms of through the survey showed is they like the autonomy, they like the control of, of the hours they work so that any time, it's not quite, it's not 24-7, but that 9 to 5, doesn't have to be 9 to 5. You've got the school drop off if you've, got a dog during the, the lockdown period, yet you've got time to take it for a walk, and you can finish later, or you can finish what's more convenient, so you've got a better life, um, home life, work balance as such. So that's the other part which people fear in terms of coming back to the office, but if you have a balance of, of a certain percentage of days or, or throughout the month that you actually attend the office, I think it's, it's easier to kind of further integrate and integrate with ease yeah. um, as people do come back to the office eventually. That's, that's a really, really good question. Um, I think it'll be phased. Uh, it'll be a phased approach on, on how they kind of start to bring people in the office and what where they invest in terms of infrastructure and, and in terms of office design, because not everyone could take down a petition and redesign and create more focus rooms or larger meeting spaces. Um, I, I think the one thing that we have seen over the last probably three to five years is actually the devices are a lot more inexpensive to where they were before. So before... In terms of installation of a, of a good audio video solution, it would cost thousands, there'll be maintenance costs on, in terms of that, and, and not anyone could install it. Right now, for many of the products that we actually sell, um, and if you look at the average selling price, actually it's come down quite a lot, and it's easy to install um, with the new platforms, with the platforms such as Teams and Microsoft, and, and making it a lot easier to, to access um, um, the technology, and actually to access a phone call any any time or a video call, it is pretty simple. So for myself, in terms of the privacies, where the privacies lie, first of all, if people are going to come in, the technology has to be better than what it is at home. Yeah. Okay, so, so that technology doesn't actually cost a significant amount of money. Then once they're in the office, it, they have to be productive. And then going back to, to what we spoke about earlier in terms of purchasing of headsets, they're pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, um, and again, um, other parts of, of the environment in terms of the social. It's about creating that space, creating that reason, and allowing people to actually get together and socialize as such. I think it's definitely something that's going to happen over time, especially in relation to real estate, where people will be locked into leases of particular lengths that they won't be able to change in the immediate term. But what we're seeing is um, what we've called a flight to quality. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, previously people bought, you know, technology and real estate often just in case they needed it rather than when they needed it. So I think we're going to see a shift towards much more of a, you know, just in time approach. So people will get what they need when they need it, but it will be of higher quality because they will be buying less. They won't be as, as um, risk averse as they were before. I hope that we will transform the way that we work for the better for everybody. I hope that we lose um, old-fashioned management attitudes, which have actually been around for about 100 years, and it's really time to let those go. Um, uh, 
I think there is a risk that some of those management attitudes will cling on and that will be driven by fear and inertia. So I think what we need is vision and people to experiment and try different things and test how it's working and talk about it, you know, because we, we you know, it's, we, we've never had a time when there's been no data in terms of post-COVID working. So I hope people really invest in measurement and they publish it, they talk about it at conferences, they share what they've learned so that we can evolve going forward. I totally agree with Nicola in terms of embracing the change. Um, uh, like Nicola, I hope people take this opportunity to, to rewrite the policies, um, relook at culture within an organisation, what it really means. Uh, listen more to employees because for many years we've seen employees are an ID number or, or, or a worker from nine to five. It, it's changed, it really has, but the world has changed as well during that time. So, so for myself, totally agree. What I'd love to see over the next 12 months is the redesigns of the rooms where it becomes an environment that people want to be there, um, people enjoy being there because, because as, you, as many of us see and say, that job can't just be a function of, of getting paid. Yeah. It, it, it takes up a lot of your lifetime, mm -hmm. and actually you've got to make the most of that time as well. So, so things have changed. And I think with the new generation as well, um, the expectation has really changed in terms of the, how they purchase, how they write reviews. Everyone feels that they have a voice, and quite right too. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it's about active listening, it's about redesigning, it's about re-looking at the culture and what it should really mean in the future. And it's a one-time opportunity really to rewrite, to rewrite the books.